Good morning. So we're gonna get started. I already turned the van on, but I'm gonna start it back here. So we're gonna press this button and we're gonna turn that switch and that's it. Then I've got some towels that I'm gonna put up. We're gonna be pulling that. Yay! I'm so excited. Um, I'd been putting that off for some reason, getting a new palm mat, and that was dumb because I am so obsessed. I feel like it changed the whole atmosphere of the van, having a new palm mat. So anyway, ow. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to throw these towels in the basket under there, that big tub, and run to the gas station, grab my rebels, and then rush to this first client because I'm late as usual. Look at this. Oh my god, you guys. Okay, so I thought today would be a good day to do a vlog because I'm doing four dogs at one house, but I just found this screw. My assistant like left it in a cup. That looks like it. Huh. Maybe a different different right door. Where did this come from? Hmm. It's gonna be the great mystery of today. Wait, maybe we'll find out, maybe we won't. I've been like seriously just examining. Everything. Maybe too. <laughs> so, what the book? Does anyone recognize this screw? Barkley. Sorry, buddy. I just went to start on him and I saw this and I was like, where did this come from? Huh. Yeah, so if you know you have a handy and you have you recognize this screw, please let me know. Um, that is just gonna mind boggle me all day. But anyway, the reason that I thought today would be a good day to uh, do a vlog is it's very different than my usual day because it's one stop with four dogs. Well, and I have one extra dog at the end of the day and I'll show you guys too, but mainly it's just gonna be one stop. So anyway, let's see, we're gonna start with Barkley. I did have some weighting that I put in here and I also used my Hyponic, this big bottle. And if you haven't seen it, it's for all hair types. I like it on my haircut dogs. Anything I know that's going to get a proper haircut, I go ahead and use this. But yeah, so now I'm going to go contemplate my life and try to figure out where that screw came from. What would that be too? I'm so baffled. Alright, so in my last vlog, it was requested that I show more haircutting. Actually, let me tell you what I'm going to do before I do it. He's a pancake dog, so if you notice me touching really gently, that's because if I do any quick... Um, high pressured things to him, he's gonna flop. So we're gonna go slow and we're gonna not grab, don't grab on a pancake dog, they're just gonna freak out. So, um, what we're doing, last time I groomed him, he was a seven strip. He was super, super matted. So, what ends up happening when you do a strip like that is when you come the next time, usually they're really long in their body and their legs are shorter because typically, whenever you get that matted dog, the legs are tighter matted than the body, so they just end up a little shorter. And even though it doesn't look like that when you initially shave them down, they end up coming back and their body is longer than their legs. So, what we're gonna do. We're going to trim up the body and just kind of blend the legs to match. We're not going to do very much trimming on the legs. So, we're going to guess blue guard. Feels good to me. So, we're just going to neaten this up. Again, the less pressure you put, the better on a dog like this. Um, typically, I'll hold under the belly. Don't do that on a pancake dog. That's what you want. <laughs> so, you may see him at some point. I'll try to record long enough that you can see what I'm talking about in case you don't groom or you've never seen a pancake dog before, um, we'll record some for you just so that you can kind of get an idea of what you're looking at. Um, but like I said, the way that I found is just get them in your position and don't move them until you have to because anytime you move them, they're going to freak out. That's just what they do. So, I don't really know why some dogs pancake and why others don't, but all I do is just work with the ones that do. So I like to back brush. I know some groomers say that if you back brush that you're making things shorter. I don't understand how that could be because you have a guard comb or blade that is actually what is predicting or determining, I should say, not predicting, your um, actual length. So as long as you don't go shorter on the guard, you shouldn't go shorter, like it's not going to take it shorter, it's just going to make it more even, make sure you got every little piece. So, I've heard a lot of groomers say like that they don't back brush and that's why, so I'm going to say I do back brush and that's why I do. Now if you have a clipper back, which I 
you, but the clipper that I use with my clipper back needs a new blade drive, and I have the blade drive. I have no excuse as to why I, don't, I haven't put it in yet, to be honest with you. Okay, so I do need to do the front half. Now, any movement is going to cause his pancaking. So, I'm going to try to very carefully put that lead behind. Very gently lean up on it. If I pull anything too fast, I promise you it's going to be like Bambi. Every leg's going to go a different direction. He's going to be hanging in the air. It's just not good for anyone. So, gently pick this little leggy up. Good job, buddy. There you go. Good job. We just got to go nice and slow for Mr. Barkley. I almost said Baxter. Where did that come from? Do I even groom a dog named Baxter? Hmm. I've known dogs named Baxter, but I don't know where that one came from. Okay, now slowly and carefully, like we are. What's the word I'm looking for? I was gonna say like when you're, you know, you're like going up to a bomb, like this is a normal thing. But you know in the movies when they go up to the bombs and they're like carefully doing the little wires or whatever, that's what you're doing with the pancake dogs. See my my hand, it's like I'm using the force. You see, <laughs> I'm trying not to actually touch him. Because if I do and I start pushing, pulling, whatever, he's gonna freak out. And it just makes everyone's life more difficult. So you can maneuver them, you just gotta do it real slow. That's just a pancake dog for you. Move a little slower because if you don't, you're just gonna end up frustrated and they're gonna be pancakes and it's just not gonna be a good time for anyone. So just take those extra few seconds to move a little slower because if you don't, it's gonna end up taking you longer and longer. Okay. side before um, I flip them around. I just find it makes my life a little faster and easier. This leggy. Do y'all watch that guy on TikTok that makes like the vintage recipes from like the Depression era and stuff like that? And he, he'll put the eggs in and he goes, egg piece. That's what makes him think of. I love him. He's always making some crazy shit. He's brave. Let me tell you, he's brave. Because some of that stuff, I'm like, mm, I don't know if I'd try that one. All right. So, we're going to do the turn. Okay, so we're going to disconnect. Rather than, like, normally I would just turn around, but he's not going to do that. He's going to just plop. So, we're just going to pick him up and flip him around. He's going to want to go down for a second. That's okay. Just using the force. Like I said, if you any motion like that, he's just gonna flop. So we're just gonna. It's like a mental thing, I think, for me. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. It works. Okay. Don't question my methods. The idea is to just not have him flop on you, because I swear it's like the emotions affiliated with the flopping. They just get really upset. They're like, ah. Oh. Like if you've scared some, like a little kid in a, a horror house or something, that's, that's what he gives me. Like you're trying to scare somebody else and you're like, ooh, and he's like, ah! <laughs> like you're like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Yeah, that's sparkly. So, when I lift, I'm going to lift from the back end. Ooh, put the legs on the ground. Let him think it was his idea to stand up. I like to, like, are y'all into, like, law of attraction and, like, manifesting and stuff? If you are, then you know about, uh, using, like, visualizing, is what I'm looking for, um, what you want. I want him to stand up good for me, so that's what I'm picturing. It's just him standing good. Gently lift this tail. You know, a lot of them like to sit once you pick that tail up. Actually, I'm shave in a little bit on the inside of this leg. I'm telling you, these pancake dogs, for whatever reason, I really think, for me, 
it works better the less restraint that I use. So you start putting the belly band and groomer's helper and all kinds of shit on them, they just freak out. So I try to not restrain them if I can, but it just depends. If they're just like turning into a ball and you can't get them to stand up, then obviously you gotta find any way around. But anyway, so there's a few tips and tricks for the pancake dogs. All right, groom number one is done. Say bye. All right, we got my next guy. There he is, little tiny dude. Um, but I wanted to say before I forgot that multi-dog households can go either way. Sometimes I think it's nicer. Other times, maybe not so much. Hold on, let's see if we can bring you in closer. I didn't think about how loud that was going to be. Um, so the thing with the multi-dog household is that for me, if it's a two-dog stock, I really prefer they just go ahead and bring me to both dogs at the same time. Um, just to give you an example, last Saturday, um, I had two Frenchies. They just moved into a new apartment. They had a lot going on all at once. Um, their furniture was getting there, and there's just a lot. Um, and basically, you know, first, I think it took me almost 10 minutes to get the first dog because, um, like I said, the mover showed up at the exact same time that I did. So it took me almost 10 minutes to get the dog. And then I got it, got it done. Um, and it took me 20 minutes to get a hold of her to get the next dog in. Uh, and then by the time it was all said and done, when I added up the extra time I had spent just waiting, it ended up being an additional 40 minutes, which is a whole nother dream I could have done. So that's like $85 to $100 down the drain. So um, there is the benefit of, of course, that you're just parked in one spot. You're going to be using less gas, um, putting less miles on your vehicle, all of those things, which is nice. Uh, but you do still have to consider those things. Another thing to consider for a house like this, for example, is it's one stop, but there's like multiple families. It's like the grandma and her kids, basically, and her kids are adults. Um, so they all each have dogs. And sometimes um, it's the same thing like I just mentioned, that getting a hold of them is difficult. Other times, I'll be sitting here working on one dog. They come up, they knock, they're like, hey, can you take this dog? And can you do this and that? You know, can, can my grandkid watch your dog, watch your groom? And you know, so it's like a little bit more of a thing since I'm here all day. Then you also have to factor in bathroom breaks. Are you going to bring like a little portable bathroom to use? Are you going to be here all day? For me personally, um, I start, my brain starts getting spent after about like two to three dogs. So I really like, I, I usually will do two and then I go run, there's like a gas station right around the corner. I'll go run over to that gas station real quick, go to the bathroom, grab a snack, and then I come back and finish the other ones. Um, that is preferred for me because I don't like to have to pee in the van if I don't have to. <laughs> surprise, surprise, if you can believe it. Um, so anyway, that's, that's what I prefer to do. Um, but then like I said, you're not saving a ton on gas. And typically when people have a ton of dogs, they want like a really big discount. And you kind of have to take that into consideration. Like, cause it, frankly, as small business owners, most of the time we can't really afford to give major discounts. I do cut these guys a bit of a deal because they started from the beginning with me and they keep a six week appointment and there's four of them. So I do cut them a little bit of a deal, but you've got to watch the people you cut deals with because it never fails. The ones that you give a significant discount are the same ones that will be like, can you just do the bathroom or can you just do this to save money or you know what I mean? And it's, and you gotta be like, you're already saving a lot of money. <laughs> and that happens way more than you think. I've even had it happen with like friends of mine. There was like one friend that I had when I first started in the van and she wanted me to groom her dog and Basically, we had set a price, and then she messaged me to see if, like, basically I would just not do part of the bath, like, if I would just do the bath and no toenails or whatever, um, if, she, if I could give it to her cheaper. And I said, sweetie, I was like, I have given you the cheapest deal that I could give you. I was like, I already am majorly discounting you, 
I'd like to no, I, I really can't give you a discount on the toenails, you know what I mean? <laughs> and so anyway, like I said, moral of the story is just sometimes these big stops can be great for you, other times they may not be. It's just really all up to you and your communication with the client. As long as you're really upfront about everything. That was actually another uh, conversation I had with this client was that she wanted to start doing like a three-week schedule. And I told her, I was like, that's fine, we can do that. I was like, but you're already majorly discounted. I was like, so that would, your price would stay the same. Because a lot of times people think, oh, well, if I come more often, it'll be cheaper. It's going to take me the same amount of time regardless. If I've got to do the full bath and all that, it's, you know what I mean? So anyway, I caution you on giving discounts for things, I guess is what I'm getting to. But I'm going to go finish um, shampooing him and all of that. And I'm in the middle of filming another video too because I'm using a new shampoo on him. All right, number two. Oh, okay. Well, that works. I was just trying to show the side of your body. What are you doing? Look at the fluffy legs. Doing this. I love the little bibs. This is from DMK. Alright, so I am at QT. Um, just wanted to go grab some Red Bulls. Ooh, also, these things are so good. You see there's like cheese and almonds and that's salami. Um, but they have all different flavors. There's like all different kinds of cheese and <coughs> different types of meats and different nuts and all that. But these things are so good and quick and easy to eat. So if you guys are looking for something good to eat on the run, I highly recommend those. But I think I'm actually, rather than sitting there here and eating, I think I'm going to be like extra practical and I'm going to go ahead and run back to my client and get started on dog number three because I really want to keep it moving. I'm doing pretty good on time today, so um, I want to stay on top of it. I don't want to get pushed too far back. But sometimes, depending, like if I'm feeling like really burnt out, then um, I think that lady, there was like a crazy line for the bathroom just now. I think that lady literally just walked in and saw it. She walked in and just turned around. <laughs> Girl, I feel you. There was seriously like a party of 12 that just went into the women's bathroom with two stalls. <laughs> it's a mess. Um, but yeah, sometimes if I'm like mentally spent, I'll sit here and like actually eat and give myself a break. But today I'm just like on a roll. I've been listening to The Greatest Secret. It's really good. Um, and yeah, I've just kind of been chilling. So anyway, I'm not... I don't feel any reason to rush right now, but anyway, uh, I'm going to go head back to my client and I'll check in when we have Beamer. Alright, so I'm the type of person, I just like to keep it moving. I literally have gotten up to a point in my career that I cannot imagine having to work like a 9 to 5 and get off at a certain time. Like the last few jobs that I've had, I've just worked until I was done and then I get off work. So like before it used to drive me crazy trying to run out the clock but now honey I can't even sit here I get stirred crazy um so moral of my story is I just get my little lunch buffet all set up we got the little cheese pack I got some cheese balls I know it's not like the healthiest lunch okay but it's food there's substance to it um, I have that little pack I showed you, and then I got a lunch, lunch bowl for a good measure because, I don't know, it's good stuff. So, yeah, I personally, a little, little pack for you, I like to like, you know, get a little piece of salami, a little piece of cheese, put them together, and I save the almonds for last. So, anyway, you guys want to say how to be more real quick? There we go. Look at him. Hey, he's so cute. A little tiny guy. All right, I'm trying to do like a different part of the dog for each clip rather than showing you like four different bodies of how I shave them down. You know what I mean? So we did the body on Barkley. I don't even think, did I show anything on Bentley? I, no, not really, but that's okay. So Beamer, I want to talk about like with scissoring. Um, so, in the grooming industry there's not as much like they basically from what i have seen it's like 
here's your shears, go for it. Like we don't do any sort of like formal training on how to properly hold your shear, on you know what the hell you're doing even. Um, and basically what I've seen is that the groomers that know how to use their shears think that, how do I say this without offending the entire internet? Seems to me like they think like the faster you do it, the better it's gonna look. And that's not the case at all. Um, I saw a post the other day, it was like, do you, what does it say, like chop into the hair or do you whittle away? And um, the answer to that should be both because it's gonna very much depend on what you're doing in that moment, right? So, um, it shouldn't be chop or whittle. It should be both because if you, like this leg right now, for example, it's pretty much where I want it. So if I start chopping into this just to be cool and be like, look how much I can chop hair, I will fuck this leg up because it's at the point that it needs to be whittled away. So like I said, it seems like in the grooming industry, there's just more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? There's more, People are more interested in seeing you just chop really fast than they are to see like, you know, really the detail work that goes into a truly good haircut. Like yes, there are some groomers that are like just freaking animals, can go so fast. But this, the faster I go, by the way, the less control I actually have over my shear. Um, so faster is not better necessarily. Um, yeah, to, if you've got a bunch of hair that you need to take off like a little bit, or sorry, if you've got a bunch of hair and you need to chop into it and get a lot, off, a lot off at once, then by all means do the big chops. But you know, there is nothing wrong, especially, especially, especially if you are a new groomer just now learning how to do your shears, the last thing you need to be doing is worried about how fast your, sh your shears are moving. You know what I'm saying? Make the cuts actually count. It's not just how fast can you do it. Like I said, I, I get that that's kind of a trend in the industry right now that we just want to go fast, 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 but it's not really doing anything besides potentially putting the dog in danger unless you have very, very good control over your shears. There are some amazing groomers out there that can sh do their shoes really, really quickly and still be safe while they do it. But the reality is, is most groomers are not that way and that it can be dangerous to just go really, really fast with no like a rhyme or reason for what you're doing. So if you whittle away, don't feel bad about that. Like you need to groom at your own comfort level. It's not about trying to be these other groomers that are, you know, been grooming for 30 years and are really, really quick now. It's not about that. It's about perfecting the level that you are at before you move on to that next level. So again, there's, damn it. Okay, anyway, what I was saying, sorry, I hate, I hate Saturdays. It's all day long. Phone call, phone call, phone call. Can't get a damn thing done. Anyway, so there's really, I mean, if you want to go fast, practice just in the air. Practice up a wall, around a can, whatever you need to do. Don't worry about just chopping at the dog. Like, please don't hurt the dog just trying to look cool because that's a lot of times what it is. It's like, oh, I look cool if I can do this fast. Get it down slow first. There's no, it's not a race, you guys. Come on. All right, we're gonna try to do Barney's face on camera to the best of our ability, but just keep in mind, it's only me here filming. I don't have a film crew yet. One of these days, one of these days, I'm gonna have a whole professional film crew. Y'all are even gonna know what to do with yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and thank you, new case. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This good boy. So I'm trying to distract you because I know what's happening. Okay, so your breath. Oh, kicking, honey. Alrighty, so where do we want to start? I already shaved out on his like inner corner and his eyes in the tub because he had some um, eye goobies. So I went ahead and shaved that off. But I'm thinking the yellow guard for his head. He is some sort of totally thing. They don't really know. They um, found him. He like wandered up to their house one day. So. I don't really know a lot about him. I like to, um, on these type of coats, I'll go like every single direction. Uh, just 
just to make sure that I get all the fingers. So I'm going to go backwards, and go forwards. Doesn't matter. You're just kind of creating that round shape. I like to take it kind of like this to get those little spots on the side. Now, the thing is about my hair cutting is that I switch my style all the time. Something about cutting hair to me is that it's all about your style and everybody's style is different. To me, there's no right or wrong way to do it as long as, you know, nobody's injured. <laughs> if you injure somebody, then that's the wrong way. But as far as like what it actually looks like, honey, that's all on you. Whatever you think looks good. It's just like art, you know, so everybody's got their style. I like more of an Asian fusion kind of style because I think it's practical and cute. But if you don't like Asian fusion, then you can do whatever you want. You can leave a long beard, whatever looks good to you. That's what's cool about grooming to me. But so all I did was just I trimmed the head with that yellow guard. Now I'm just going in to, to trim up the visor. Um, I used to run the clippers down the side of the face too, but now I've kind of find kind of found that I like to hand scissor that rather than um, clip it with the clippers. I just feel like I can get a better blend if I just hand scissor it. So. I have already trimmed like all around the head and stuff, so I kind of have my guide. I'm just gonna flip this ear out of my way. Just using my Utsumi half moon comb. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Pope Jan and I was seems like damn whitey. I know, that was my bad. Okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and match that on this side. Just what I did over there. Do the same thing over here. You just have to trust me. Yeah, I just can't see. See? I'm starting to connect it into that jaw. Now you can do this however you want. If you don't like starting with the top of the head, then start wherever is more comfortable for you. I like to get the top and then work my way to the muzzle. I don't really know why. It's just the way I started doing it. Huh. Is your eye been looking like that? This eye looks you can't really see on camera. You can kind of see. You see, like, it's like a little pink right there. It's not on this eye. Weird. Huh. That's what I was staring at, in case you're wondering. Okay, so now I'm just going to get a look at me. two ways. I'm just going to go straight in. But sometimes too, if I want to get like a nice line, I'll kind of go backwards in like this. And then I'll use that kind of across the chin. Brush this all forward. Now all this stuff that's coming in front here, trimmed. He's kind of sucking his hair up into his mouth here. So, oops, sorry. <laughs> Dang, squishing my nose, lady. My bad. Okay. Corner there. Okay. I just like to brush this area down as I'm trimming it. stick their tongue out on me.
Mama shears. Here we go. I like these curved shears for this area. Okay. I just hold them like as straight as I can. See how this one. They're curved, so they're not going to be super straight, but I just kind of go straight across the top of the nose, if that makes sense. We're just going to blend that all together. Sometimes, too, I'll go back in with thinning shears if I feel like it's still looking a little too choppy. But he's kind of got, like, that poodly like hair. I've noticed that type of hair is pretty forgiving, so you can get away with just doing, like, straights and chunkers without it looking crazy. Whereas, like, a Yorkie, you probably want to go in and uh, use some thinners too. But noodle types, they, the chunkers seem to work good on them. I think that's why a lot of groomers that do a ton of noodles just like love chunkers because they work more like a straight on this type of hair, but they're not so harsh. So, that's my theory. I used to hate chunkers. Like, I wouldn't even use them at all because I did not like the texture it left behind. But like I said, I've learned on certain breeds that uh, they work really well. Didn't really like how that was in front of his mouth. And this lip hair is always the thing I miss. I always notice on hammer that it'll look good for like a day or two and then all of a sudden like some little hair that he's been sucking in his mouth for the last couple days like comes out and I'm like, excuse me, where is that from? I think he's pretty much good on his face, you guys. Um, I'm just going to touch up his ears. I feel like ears are my kryptonite. I've never quite gotten them to where I like love them. So these kind of ears are especially hard because they like fold kind of weird. <laughs> so like you'll think you got them good and then he like holds them so side kind of weird and you're like, what the fuck? That looks awful actually. <laughs> so do the best you can. you can't see this side at all. I hoped that with me holding it up you'd be able to see it. <sighs> Highly debating. I'm going back and forth. We're just chit-chatting at this point. Oh, it's kind of getting long time here, but that's okay. We're almost done. Um, <clears throat> I have been going back and forth in my head. I'm like, do you want to So I got one more dog after this. You know what? I am going to take a break. I was like, do I take a break or do I just knock it out? I'm like, I'm going to go bath dog. But you know how, like, sometimes you're just like, I just need, even if it's five minutes, like, I just need a second, okay? All right, so I'm going to go and finish him up. And he's so sweet. He's just the sweetest boy. Eat my boogies. All right, we got last one. Big butt. He's kind of a loud boy. That's okay. All right. Y'all aren't going to be able to see him. I don't really have a good stand for you, no care. Hold on. I got Cheeto's fingers. Give me a second. I was going to do um, part of my video on these little powder things on him, but frankly, sorry, I'll fix it. Frankly, uh, he's just not patient enough for that kind of video. Y'all don't care if you hear him yelling. Y'all know how it is. Oh, I just noticed that these have little tear strips. I've been using like junk shears that I have that makes me sharpen and I just use to cut for like nasty stuff. Anyway, so I'm going to use these powders on him. I've been doing this powdered stuff on my short haired dogs and uh, I really like it. Just kind of mixing it in with like whatever shampoo I'm using basically. I like shampoo them first and then I go back in and add this stuff if I need it. But yeah, I feel like it really does a good job on my short haired dogs. Really extra clean too because like that's really the trick with 
short haired dogs is you gotta get them like super clean if you want them to dry fast. For me, they take as long to dry as some doodles and stuff, you know? It's like, the hair is just so stiff, it doesn't wanna dry. So, yeah, I like stuff that really scrubs them good, you know? This stuff is really weird, it's like a powder. I thought it was like a foot soap, but if you guys watched my like iconic uh, haul, I think it was called. Um, but the hyponic call I did, uh, I can just dump this in my hand. Let me try that. But the hyponic call I did, uh, I talked about this powder stuff and that they sent me more and I was going to do a video on it and whatever. And that still works. But I've been testing it out first to kind of get some impressions on it. Just make sure I know how to use it. Because sometimes, like, when you get, like, weird stuff like this, like, I don't do it ever again. I'm like, I don't want to be figuring that out on camera, how to use it. I'd rather, like, have tried it out before, at least have an idea, you know? So, anyway, that's why I've been using it right now. So that I can kind of get an idea before I do a demo on it. This is weird. And, uh, yeah. I've been using it anytime I get a short haired dog now because you can use it as an additive. And what I've been doing is like I do two packs on a big dog and like one pack on a small dog. That seems to work out well. Yeah. And now I'm going to wash the tootsies. He said I get very frustrated. He said I don't like bath time. It's usually he's good for the bath, but he's a dryer biter. So we have to use extra precaution. That's why we're saying hi now and not during the drying. He's a, he's a um, crazy man. He's a good boy, no. But yeah. Anyway, so that's all we're doing for him. He's all the time. So, gotta remember to film an outro for you guys when they get home. I, just went, I did end up taking a break, by the way. And I went and saw my dogs, let them out to go potty. So I'd done the math, I was like, it's eight to four that they haven't gone to the bathroom. Probably about that time. <sighs> yeah, last rebel of the day. Pop it open real quick. And then, yeah, I'm gonna go and finish up this bath. And then we will come back and do the outro. It's been a pretty chill day, I would say. Okay, so we're inside now because I did forget to film an outro, but I have a good reason as to why. So here's the story time of like what just happened to me a few minutes ago. Okay, so I get back home and the first thing I usually do whenever I get, you know, parked and everything in the driveway is I take all the trash out of the trash cans and like clean out the tub and all that. So I do all that, like do a really good vacuum and everything. Like I'm in there for like a minute, okay? So I open my sliding door and there is a car in my driveway. Okay, I live alone. So that is not normal. Uh, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? So I got like my bag full of trash. It's got like empty bottles and shit in it. I was like, this will hurt if it hits somebody, right? So I've got like my bag of trash. I turn the corner and it's like this old lady. Like she's like probably in her 60s or so, like gray hair, like shoulder length and whatever. And she comes up, she's got these big oval glasses, like picture like 70s style kind of glasses, right? Like thick rim and with pink lenses, right? But the kicker is she still has like the UV <laughs> protection sticker on her sunglasses. And she comes up and she's like, oh, I'm sorry. I was looking for Janine. And I'm like, I'm Janine. And she's like, oh no, no, the dog groomer. And I was like, that's that's me and she was like no 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 like she's like out in greenville and da, da 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 i have groomed in greenville so like i didn't recognize her though but she was like i worked with her before she's like yeah there's another groomer named janine she's like i thought that was you so like i followed you here I, i'm like still like there's on so many levels i'm baffled you know what i'm saying because like she followed me into my driveway clearly because i and i know the reason because normally i watch behind me to like make sure nobody's following me but it was like 4 30 or no maybe like five o'clock in the afternoon like bright sunny like middle of the afternoon my neighbor was sitting out on his porch i was like waving to him like didn't even think anything of it what are you doing stevie so um 
anyway, she's like, oh yeah, there's another dog groomer named Janine in Greenville. And she starts like asking about my neighbor and she's like, you know, is that so-and-so's house next door still? Oh, and then by the way, before we get there, before, uh, so she's like, I'm looking for the dog groomer. We figured out I'm not the Janine she's looking for, I guess. And then she's like, is this Alice's house? Is she still living here? I was like, this is my house. I live here. And I was like, that's what I was kind of like thrown off by you being here. And she was like, oh my gosh, like, congratulations. I was like, thank you. And uh, she's like, so then she starts like asking about my neighbor. She's like that I'm related to him. Da, 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 da. And I was like, well, he's sitting there like on his porch right now. I was like, I literally just waved to him or whatever. And uh, she was like, I thought that was him over there. But like, I didn't want to be weird. <laughs> She didn't want to be weird and go over to her relative's house unexpectedly. Didn't she wouldn't want to be weird and do that. But following me home, totally normal, you know? So anyway, um, that is why I forgot to film my outro. But I feel like that's a pretty legit reason to like forget. Like I literally got inside and I was talking to my sister on my on the phone. It just like hit me. I was like, shit, I gotta film that outro real quick. So yeah, <laughs> I don't know, you guys. Like, I don't want to be like, yeah, this stuff always happens to me because I'm really not trying to attract more of that into my life. Like, two times is enough for me. Like, let's cap it at two. Let's let's have people just, you know, observe the phone number and be respectful of my privacy and just call or text me. That would be fantastic. Um, but, you know... It is what it is, I guess. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog with the surprise ending. It was certainly a surprise ending for me. <laughs> Some freaking old lady at my door with the UV sticker. I was like, girl. And then, she, like, if she didn't know, like, my neighbors by name, like, I was like, I thought she was, like, on drugs. Like, honest to God. Because first she's, like, asking, like, for Janine the dog groomer, who's me. And then she's like, is this Alice's house? I'm like, I don't think anyone named Alice there's it's possible like there's a guy that owned my house and he had three daughters and maybe one of them was Alice I'd have to like I don't know I might I have the paper somewhere but I was like who the fuck is Alice I've never gotten mail or anything for for an Alice so I don't know who the fuck Alice is but girl she ain't living here so don't come here again you fucking crazy lady <laughs> anyway I hope you enjoyed this video I love you guys thank you as always for watching I will see you in the next one bye you guys